Hi, Miss Workouts community. Did you know that there is a well-established link between vitamin D and multiple sclerosis? And this includes associations with the actual course of the disease itself. Now, many doctors and neurologists often check for vitamin D levels and recommend supplements for their patients if they determine that they have a lower than normal level of vitamin D. So in today's video, Dr. Lori Mayer will talk to you about vitamin D. For those of you who do not know Dr. Lori Mayer, she's a nurse practitioner with decades of experience helping clients navigate their MS in a clinical setting. As a team member at MS Workouts, she regularly posts episodes of her series called MS Health Education where she dives into a number of topics, including foot drop, MRIs, spasticity, cognition in MS, numbness, and much, much more. Her videos are designed to better educate you on your symptoms so you can feel more confident when speaking to your doctor or neurologist about them. Now that I've introduced Dr. Lori, let's go ahead and turn it over to you, Lori. Welcome back to the MS Workouts YouTube channel. I'm Jeff Gott, exercise physiologist at Practical Fitness and MS Workouts and co-creator of the Steady Pace Technique. In this channel, we help you gain strength safely and effectively through our science-based slow motion steady pace techniques so that you can feel more confident doing the things that you love to do. Every week, we're gonna be releasing new exercises, stretches, yoga, and talks. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you can be notified when our latest video drops. Well, hi, Steady Pacers. Today, we're gonna to talk about vitamin D. We're gonna talk about vitamin D's relation to, to MS, whether or not it would be an appropriate supplementation for you. Back in the 1800s, vitamin D deficiency was originally discovered as the cause of rickets due to lack of exposure to sunshine or lack of vitamin D rich foods. The discovery of vitamin D deficiency actually prompted the fortification of foods that we see today. It's estimated that about 35% of adults in the U.S. have a vitamin D deficiency, and actually about 50% of adults worldwide have insufficient levels of vitamin D. Some of the signs and symptoms of vitamin D deficiency might include some fatigue, maybe some bone pain, possibly some muscle weakness or muscle aches or muscle cramps. You can also see some mood changes like depression. So low levels of vitamin D have been associated with increased risk of death from cardiovascular disease, cognitive impairment in older adults, severe asthma in children, and cancer. And it actually may play a role in diabetes, hypertension, glucose intolerance, and MS. So what do we know from research about vitamin D and MS? There are many observational studies that have suggested a correlation between the level of higher levels of serum vitamin D and reduced risk of developing MS and reduced clinical activity for those diagnosed with MS and some benefits possibly lessening the frequency and the severity of the symptoms. Also includes a possible decrease of relapse and reduction in disease activity on the brain MRI. Research has shown that maintaining adequate levels of vitamin D may actually have a protective effect and may lower the risk of developing MS. And some studies have indicated that taking 400 IU or more of vitamin D per day decreases the risk of MS in women. So in addition, there's a number of studies that have shown that sun exposure and vitamin D in the diet may lower the risk of MS. So supplementation of vitamin D is considered as an important modifiable environmental risk factor for developing MS. There are several causes of vitamin D deficiency which can involve a deficiency in intake or in the absorption, which has to do with your diet, malabsorption problems, some bowel disease, or even some pancreatic insufficiency. In addition, it can be due to osteoporosis, which we see in menopausal women. So the connection between vitamin D and MS is strengthened 
by the association between sunlight and the risk of MS. The farther away from the equator a person lives, the higher risk of MS. So sunlight is the body's most efficient source for the vitamin D, suggesting that exposure to sunlight may offer some protection. Our main sources of vitamin D are sunlight, diet, and supplementation. Our bodies do get the vitamin D from sunlight through the skin, but for many of us, it isn't enough vitamin D. Besides, we need to be careful of too much time in the sun, avoid sunburns, which can increase the risk of skin cancer, and you know, older age also affects the skin absorption of vitamin D. We all know that sun exposure is less during the winter months and exposure is less if you live in those upper latitudes. Skin pigmentation with darker skin individuals have higher levels of melanin and that actually absorbs the ultra light radiation, the UVR, and protects the underlying skin from the damage caused by the rays. But this in turn reduces the availability for vitamin D synthesis in the darker skin and hence decreases the vitamin D that's made for a given exposure compared to less pigmented skin. So there's been quite a bit of research actually done in the UK population showing that for those in England who live in northern latitudes to meet their vitamin D requirements, skin type 5, and those are people which include those with olive or dark skin tone and those that and tan easily and very rarely burn, need about 25 minutes of sunlight at lunchtime from March to September. So in addition to sunlight, we can get some vitamin D from foods. So we've got our fatty fishes such as salmon, mackerel, sardines and trout, and even canned tuna fish. You can get it from egg yolks, they have vitamin D, and even shiitake mushrooms. So according to the NIH trusted source, half a cup of raw white mushrooms actually canes, contains almost 50% of an adult's recommended daily uh, of vitamin D. Look for plant milks like oat milk and almond milk and soy milk. Look for cow's milk and orange juice and yogurts that have vitamin D actually added. In addition, many cereals have vitamin D added, and of course, there's cod liver oil, which is very rich in vitamin D, as well as beef liver. However, for some of us, the amounts of vitamin D from foods and sunlight just isn't enough, and this is why some of us need supplementation. I personally have osteoporosis, and the body is constantly absorbing and replacing bone tissue. With osteoporosis, new bone creation doesn't keep up with the old bone removal. So I do have my vitamin D level checked annually. I do take about 5,000 5, I use a day, which seems to actually maintain my vitamin D level into a good range. And I also supplement with calcium in addition. So it's a serum. 25 hydroxyvitamin D concentrations that are measured to estimate your vitamin D sufficiency, and that's in the plasma, in the blood. The normal range is measured as nanograms per milliliter, and many experts recommend a level between 20 and 40. Others actually recommend a level between 30 and 50. So because there are several causes of vitamin D deficiency, you need to discuss this with your family practice doctor and or your neurologist. So depending on the cause and level, your provider may advise a prescription form of vitamin D supplementation if your level is really low. And then once it achieves an acceptable level, switch over to the over-the-counter oral supplement, somewhere between 2,000 and 5,000 IU a day. Vitamin D supplementation in people with MS appears to be safe but at high doses can lead to changes in calcium levels. More research is needed to determine whether it's truly beneficial. So you're going to discuss this with your doctor. You know, the Institute of Medicine actually recommends 600 international units of vitamin D a day for adults up to about age 70. 
and the recommendation increases to 800 a day for those that are age 71 and older. The recommendation for women who are pregnant or breastfeeding is 600 IU per day. However, the Institute of Medicine recommends avoiding taking more than 4,000 IUs a day. If you're diagnosed with a vitamin D deficiency, it may be appropriate to use a prescription formulated weekly up to about three months until your levels become normal and then switch to the maintenance dose. So this is a conversation you're going to have with your doctor. The issue is vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin so large doses over an extended period of time can result in toxicity. So you're going to need to notify your doctor if you experience any signs and symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, poor appetite, any weakness, any weight loss. So in addition, vitamin D toxicity can lead to elevated levels of calcium in your blood, which can result actually in kidney stones. It needs to be managed properly. And if you look at clinicaltrials.gov, and it lifts a number of uh, research actually looking at vitamin D and MS right now. If you're considering vitamin D to reduce your risk or help manage MS, you're gonna talk with your neurologist about what's both safe and what's helpful for you. We need more research on the impact that vitamin D and supplementation with vitamin D and MS. Thank you, Steady Pacers. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any topics you'd like us to discuss, please contact MS Workouts, and we'll see you next time. Our YouTube channel is a great place to start gaining strength, but if you want to get serious about reducing your symptoms and getting results, then you need to be on a weekly structured strength training program with other individuals just like you. And that's exactly what we offer at MS Workouts through our membership. Click the link in the video or below the video to learn how our membership can help you achieve your goals. And while you're on the website, make sure you sign up for the no cost seven day strength camp so you can experience how we can help you do the things that you love to do with more confidence. See you all next week.